Welcome class. This is a general introduction to my or working with some general classes. You'll notice that I have the Southwestern Blackboard College login up and I also have my online uh, book up. You want obviously you might have an online book, you may not, but I just want to be clear that those two items are in there. Now first when you go to log on your section you'll note that you have your classes off to your right. My section might look a little bit different from yours, but it is in fact there. You'll notice it'll have Microsoft Access. That's the example that I'm using. As soon as you log into the class, there will be uh, an announcements page. You'll notice you have your menus off to the left. And you do want to take your time with your class to read the announcements thoroughly so you understand what and what's going on with your instructor and what they're trying to get in touch with you. You'll notice you have your units off to the side that usually correspond to a week. And then down in the bottom on my particular announcement, I have some enumerated items that are very important that talks about the response time and talks about the amount of time necessary in order to accomplish task and how soon I will get back to you. One of the things that you want one of the things that you want to keep in touch with or one of the things you want to keep in mind is that if you do have questions throughout the course, you make absolutely sure to ask them. And if I don't, for whatever reason, I don't get a hold of you right after you send me the email, I have my cell phone number on there for a reason. A, uh, I had a principal once that said, perception becomes reality when left unchecked. If you perceive that I'm not paying attention to you, if you have the perception that I'm not giving you the support that you need, that will become reality whether or not that's true or not. So please contact me to resolve that as we move through the units. Additionally, you will note that I have different units open at different times. Now, moving on, please ignore the learning objectives. The next thing we're going to talk about is assigned reading and preparation activities. The assigned reading and preparation activities is a very, very important thing because it gives you the introduction to your particular chapter and um, what you're trying to accomplish during that time. You'll notice that in our particular example, we have Access 1, Zip, Access 2, Zip, and the FM Zip. That gives you the Access 1 is an actual download link. It'll download it. You'll notice it downloaded in the left hand corner, right? And it downloads a zip file. Sometimes when you download it, it'll actually be a zip file, and other times it won't. So, for instance, when we open it now, it is not a zip file. And I have already downloaded mine and moved it off to the desktop. So I would left click and hold here and drag it over to the left on my, on my desktop. You know, if it happens to be a zipped file, and we're going to go ahead and go through that here in a minute. So I click on it, it downloads, it pulls up, I move it over. Now these things that I'm about to do are there because of the fact that it's a duplicate. So I'm copy and replacing, yes. Do this for all the rest of them, copy and replace. Skip, there we go. Now you'll notice it's moved it over. If it was a zip file, you'd see a zipper down the side of it. You'd have to open it up and then move all those files out because you can't open from directly within a zip file. Aside from that, you, those are the data files necessary in order to accomplish the tasks in the particular chapter. <coughs> now in this particular case, you'll notice that it goes through instructions. It talks about reading the tutorials at a certain time and doing certain things that you're supposed to do. All the different tutorials involved with the uh, this particular access section and as you're going through you have to keep in mind the difference between here's my instructions and here's things that actually give me assistance or help me out as we go through and we'll take a look at the actual textbook here after a bit. The next step will move on to the course schedule, due dates, and graded assignments due. So each section is broken up into tutorials. So it's usually a review and an actual tutorial and it's broken up into when the discussions take place when the dis review discussions or rebuttal discussions from uh, other uh, rebuttal maybe a strong word when you respond to other individuals and all the assignments that are actually due and there's links down below so you'll notice the first discussion is due on 11 13 2014 that is the thursday after we start class on the 10th so the first discussion is usually due the thursday of the class when that particular unit starts and then the response to the discussions on this case is due the 16th which is the sunday after and then all the quizzes tutorials or other items are due on the monday after the start so in, in our unit one started on 11 10 
the first due date is a 13, then a 16, then a 17. And they all kind of mirror that progression because consistency helps out a lot where these things are concerned. You also notice where it has a Sebastian course schedule. That's the overall course schedule for the entire class. It shows due dates, when things are due, what's going on, and helps you determine it. Now, the introduction, the introduction discussion is one where it's not mentioned on the due dates, but it is due at the end of that week. You do need to talk about the introduction. Um, it says introduction due Thursday at midnight. All our due dates are midnight. It is included, but the introduction only exists within the first uh, week and first tutorial. Now, as when you're looking at introduction, when you're looking at uh, any sort of uh, discussions, they all have the same sort of prompt, same sort of methods. You have a prompt, you answer the question based on how much information you have, and it's usually good to go ahead and create your responses in a Word document. So, for instance, I'm going to create an example of a response in a Word document, and I just simply write this as an example of a post, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on discussion. In our case, it'll be the uh, introduction. So it's loading up the introduction discussion. Then I push create thread. That allows me, then takes me to the create thread section. Usually there'll be a titling um, method that you're supposed to use. In my case, I'm just going to title it introduction example. Once the introduction example, I then highlight what I want. I push control C on the keyboard. Control C copies, then I move it over here and I push control V to paste. Now the reason I do it both in a Word document, I do the main item in a Word document, number one, I can spell check it. Number two, if there's some sort of internet disconnection, I can still maintain whatever post I've created, which on responses aren't too bad because that's only about 100 words, whereas on the original post it's somewhat 150. And I've actually gone so far as to save sometimes my um, discussions that I've done in Word in case there's some sort of disconnect, in case there's some sort of problem. And you'll notice it comes up with the introduction example, who actually created it, when it, is it published, how many responses. Now I'm going to delete the post because it doesn't need to be there, but you need to at least be aware of that's how a discussion takes place. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our first assignment, which is going to be our Unit 1 Tutorial 1. Right, so Unit 1 Tutorial 1. There's some detail that fell off of that posting that I need to redo. But so, here's our Unit 1, Tutorial 1. Okay, there's Review, and then there's a Case Problem, and then there's a Quiz, and now we get to Tutorial 2. So in each particular case, you have a Review Problem, a Case Problem, and the actual item. It goes through, it tells you what page numbers there are, it tells you what essentially you have to do, you have to do how you want to title what you have, and then how, do you, how you want to submit it. We're going to go through the submission of the project as well to make sure that you're at least aware of what's going on or that's concerned, and you can put some eyes on to the project. But what's really important and interesting about technical text, a lot of your working with this class, a lot of working through things, you'll be required to interface with the text quite often. As you're doing this with the text, you need to make sure that you understand what the difference is. For instance, this is the beginning of the text, Mine Electronic, it talks through different elements. Now the actual uh, information and what you have to do is on AC7 or page 7, but there's a lot of introduction. I highly suggest, especially where the quizzes are concerned and a deeper level of understanding, that you do that information and work up to AC7. A lot of people like to skip right to it. I'm not looking over your shoulder, so I can't really um, say, oh, I don't do that. But I highly recommend read for understanding before you actually do, so that way you know what you're doing and have a deeper level of understanding. Now I'll have some work with you and other videos to help you out, but this gets you started. The items in pink with the numbers are the actual uh, parts of the tutorial that you have to accomplish as the actual project. In this particular case, this is working through the tutorial itself. It has pictures, and one of the things you want to keep in mind is if it tells you that your items are located at a specific location, 
the specific location that the items are located, such as data files or things along those lines, might not be the same if you save them in a different place. So you have to keep in mind in the back of your head that if it's telling you to go through uh, different directories, if you save your files on your desktop, those directories might not be the same. So I've had students be very confused about that before. If it's talking about directories, you know where your items are. So, for instance, mine's on the desktop, which I just mine was on the desktop, which I just showed showed you. And as we go through, it talks about how to save things, where to save it to, how to start project, different steps you're supposed to take. In my case, I've created a sample database, so we can actually uh, work on submitting the document after we've accomplished it. But you'll notice there's a definite difference between here's the steps you have to perform and here's things that are kind of giving you a heads up in your text. The next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and work on actually turning items in. So I'll go ahead and click on my Unit 1 Tutorial 1. It takes to me to my hand in. There's different comments that I can add. You don't need to worry about putting your name in the, in the comments or anything like that because I know who submitted it because it'll be up by your username. So I'll browse my computer when I'm ready to turn in. Now in my case it's on the desktop. I like to do things on my desktop especially for examples. Browse my computer, desktop, I go to where the item is, Tutor tutorial 1, the Chrism tutorial 1. Now it says your name. Obviously you would put your name in it. But so I click on it then I push open and what that does is that attaches it to submission and then I push submit and what that does is that actually submits it for grading it'll be there for me so I can grade your particular assignment now I hope as you go through this kind of helps you in some general ways about navigating the course I know that you've had training from Southwestern I've known that they've given you a heads up and all these different things but I just wanted to give you a little bit more uh, heads up and a little bit more guidance as we go forward into the class look for other a uh, little bit of hands-on videos for me to try to help you out through the, uh, the di different sections as we especially as you move and begin with access because access is one of the more difficult suite programs available